Okay, on the GL500 Silverwing update. Uh, got the carbs off, got them apart. One of the problems I had uh, was on the bottom uh, fuel mixture screw. I don't know if I can get this in the light, but this is how they're supposed to look. On the uh, bottom mixture screws right here where it tapers, uh, for whatever weird reason, I don't understand why they do it, but they taper this down real small right there. Uh, one was good, and one of them had been broke off up flush, and I took the Dremel and cut a groove in it, because I couldn't get pliers or anything in it. Took the Dremel and ground out a groove. So I could get that out. Let's jump. I've got full rebuild kits. Um, complete carb kits for both carburetors. Uh, and when I say I ordered everything, I mean I got everything. A full carb kit and also um, the air valve. I think it's what that's called. Um, I just ordered everything for them. It's gonna, I mean, if you're going to get into it, you might as well put everything in new. Now, I am absolutely, it blows my mind that, that this thing even ran at all. Uh, so much rust and junk has come out of these carburetors. And this is after cleaning a little bit, and it's, I still got a long ways to go. Um, these things are just nasty. I mean, nasty. This main jet, 112 main jet, um, I took the drill bits and poked at the holes. You got three on, on the sides and then one down at the bottom. One of the bottoms was stopped up and only one of the three holes on one side was open. Uh, it was the top one. The bottom two were stopped up and that bottom one was stopped up. And so we're going to chunk those uh, and get a new main jet. And I'm wanting to go from a 112 to 115 anyway, so I've already got the 115 jets on order. So that's where I'm at. Uh, new jets, the floats, and both of them were nice and dry, wasn't no fluid in them. I went ahead and submerged them in water. I made sure there was no air bubbles coming out. So my floats are good. Uh, I'm putting new needles and seats in it comes in a kit. Anytime you're taking carburetors apart, one of the arch enemies of getting one apart is getting the Phillips head screws out. Uh, I have got the assortment of different sizes and if like, ooh, that's a good one right there. You see, this is how I found this. See how it's still rusty? This is where somebody had tried to be in this carburetor once before. Speaking of, I was told by this bike's previous owner that, quote, we had to rebuild the carburetors. No, they did not, because there's nothing in here that's new. And these screws were absolute heck to get out. And I promise you, had they have just rebuilt the carburetors, uh, would have been eight months ago, they would not have looked like this. So I was hoodooed there. Anyway. I want to tell you a little bit about something I found. Uh, anytime getting screws out, uh, of course I've used an impact driver. That is an absolute must have. You've got to have these. Um, um, if you're going to do much mechanic work at all, they are worth their weight in gold. Even if you do not have one, you can take a screwdriver, uh, set it over the screw, hit it a few times with the hammer to kind of jostle it loose. But let me tell you about a cheap little bargain I found. Um, I was at Tractor Supply the other day, and uh, was picking up some dog food, and lo and behold, they had uh, actually on the clearance rack, Stanley uh, Diamond Industrial Grade Simulated Diamond Tip. These things, I will never be able to get this focused right, I'm sure, but they claim uh, no slippage. 
uh, on the back of this package. Now these, you get the flat head and a Phillips head for uh, right, they were regularly $7.99. The twin pack was $5. I have got a box over there full of screwdrivers, but I didn't have anything that had a, a tip like this. They claim that these are supposed to reduce slippage. Now, I did tap my screws a few times. All the screws went across them and tapped them uh, with the hammer, uh, either using a conventional Phillips on the small screws and on the big heavy ones that hold the mounting brackets on, I hit them with the big one. But I will say, even on that one that's rounded off, this thing never slipped never once it bit and held and i was able to eat every screw that come out you could hear it pop as it was breaking loose so definitely worth definitely worth five dollars they're worth twenty dollars as well as well as they worked um i normally don't endorse things uh, i have no connection with stanley but uh, i have used stanley tools for eons they're cheap they are cheap. Um, so, um, anyway, I had another Stanley box full of stuff here somewhere. Oh, it's there buried. Stanley tools there. But, um, yeah, I've had great luck with their products. I'm, I'm absolutely pleased with, with the purchase of that.